Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, today's video, well, you might figure it out by the thumbnail <laughs> or, you know, the title. Anyway, back in 2021, um, it feels like ages ago now, but it's, it's like three years ago. It's like, it's three years ago. Oh my goodness, time flies. Anyway, I read this book called A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabo. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly because I do not speak French, but there we go. Apologies for everything. <laughs> anyway, so I read this book and then I sort of never, you know, picked up the rest of the books. I think book four hadn't come out yet, or if it had, it was still in like hardback, not translated. It wasn't in the paperback format I wanted it in, which is in English, because I don't read French. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I never continue it, but then 2024 came around and I was like, you know what? It's about time I finish this series. So you know what? I did. I did. I finished it. So the first book, A Winter's Promise, I reread that obviously because it's been three years. And then the second book, The Missing of Claire the Loon. And then we have the third book, which is The Memory of Babel or Babel, whichever you want to say. It's either way. Either way works. And now we have the fourth and last book, which is called The Storm of Echoes. The reason I'm looking down is because I have my notes here. Literally just the title of the book. And then there is, I believe, a novella set between books three and four. Now, I couldn't find it, so I haven't read it. Uh, also, I don't know if it's actually translated into English or not, um, so there's that. Uh, I can't even, like, figure out what the English title is supposed to be, because all I get up is this purple cover with French title, and I don't speak French. No. I would love to, but languages and me, we don't mix well, okay? I can't, I can barely speak English sometimes. Well, most of the time. Anyway, so, as I said, way back three years ago, you know, <laughs> in the ancient times, I read A Winter's Promise. Now, I really liked this book, but it was also very YA. Not in the sense that it was, like, badly written YA, because there are a lot of YA books that are, like, hastily written just to, you know, push books out. So there was things to consider as well because it is a book translated from French to English so it's not even the first language. Now this wasn't something that I actually noticed when reading the book. I didn't even notice it when I reread the first book and we reread. Re I read <laughs> books two, three and four. So I didn't notice that which means the translator did an excellent job and we like to see this we like to see these these things because I've just heard translating things I've heard translations that's been like translated to this um, and you get these sentences when when, uh, that when you hear them it's like this makes no sense we're missing something we're missing something um, Especially when it comes to like jokes and things, some jokes do not translate from the original language. It's just a fact. It should be a fact if it's not. I'm stating it as a fact. Jokes are sometimes very hard to translate. And I get this, which is why I prefer reading in English because, well, it's my first language, so that makes sense as well. Where am I going with? Where am I go with this? I don't know. Anyway, all in all, I really enjoyed this series. Now, as I said, when I read the first book the first time, it was very YA. Not bad YA, just YA. It's, you can tell the audience is, how do I say this without being degrading? 
well, it's it's not written down per se, but it's written for like a softer type of audience. That also makes it sounds very it sounds weird, but I'm trying to explain it. I'm not great at explaining things. Okay, I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's there's those romance, but it's not like heavy set sexy scene romance there's not that kind of romance there's love from like i guess co-workers friends family that kind of interconnected joint adoration for each other my alarm's about to go off and it's actually kind of distracting so it has a sweetness to it which it's it i guess it's this is what I'm trying to say is very YA in a bit. Um, as in it's, it has this, it has this pureness, this innocent about it, which is what I'm, I, which is, I think, what I think YA is in a way. When it comes to the plot, I'm not sure it actually required a four book series, a quartet as it were. Um, because I feel like there's loads of plot points in the series that you could have just scrapped and still made it a decent, probably duology, maybe a trilogy. Um, it's hard to say, hard to say. Um, I mean, all the things that happens make sense, but then at some point it feels like it's too much. Sort of like my waffling. <laughs> yes I do make fun of myself but yeah all in all I really enjoyed it it was a very sweet little thing to have read I guess um so no regrets no regrets so what is it about well cats are going crazy so <laughs> So, some time long ago, the world was divided into arcs. So, I don't remember how many they are, but there, there's quite a few. So, there's these different arcs. And sort of, on the different arcs, there's like different families and like head of families. There's a whole complicated thing about that, which I'm not going to get into. So, there's sort of like the head of the families are sort of like the gods um as it were uh and that's a whole different conversation different thing that's um, well it's gonna be woo i'm not gonna be able to explain that anyway it's not the main well it's not the main plot but it's a big part of the plot towards the end anyway not in the beginning um Anyway, so we have these different arcs and they have, on the different arcs, they have people with sort of special abilities, I guess. Uh, I do think, like, all people have some sort of ability. Uh, most of them may not be, like, aware they have any specialness, but a lot of people have these, like, special abilities. And, like, our main character, she has this ability to so she's a reader so anything she touches you know with her fingers her skin she can read the the memory the past of this object um i don't believe it works in the form of humans but she reads the history of the object now she also has the ability to go through mirrors mirror walk which is kind of you know where the the whole quartet gets its name from <laughs> the mirror visitor uh there's a different meaning to that as well which we find out way later in the series uh, so not important to start with but we know she can like walk through mirrors she can't walk through uh like long distances but she can do that which is very handy come to think that also she needs to be like big enough so she can pass through because there's a point where she like listens 
um, she puts her ear to a little compact mirror and she can like listen in on conversations in a different part of the house. That also, just a little tidbit. So our main character, we follow her throughout. I don't think we have, did we have any other POVs? No, confusion. Anyway, our main character, Ophelia. So we follow her throughout, it's her story. The first book begins with like her family and another family on a different arc, by the way, has sort of paired Ophelia up with this strange dude. So she's set to be married against her will, mostly, because she's quite happy working in her little, is it a library? I'm gonna say library. Um, she's quite happy working there and just, you know, having her little peaceful life, doing things, reading objects, whatnot. And this marriage entails her leaving her ark, her family, to go to this other strange place where there's a lot more danger to just being alive and she sort of ends up you know going through some emotions because this marriage is also like it's it, I guess a marriage of convenience would be the proper thing to say um, but it's not a convenience for her though because it's something we later find out that when they do marry um, they sort of inherit part of uh, their partner's abilities so her partner is has an ability he's basically a very good memory and he's good with numbers and such so he's an accountant for like the government thingy uh he does things um and then the head of the family on that arc uh has this book that he wants to have uh, read and anyone who's tried before has perished in some way so uh, they don't really have the uh, yeah it's a it's a whole thing it's a whole thing so as we go along through all the books we find out what this book actually is and we find out that uh, other heads of families uh, on other arcs um, has the same book and what this book means in the greater sort of scheme of things um, it's it's quite a lot uh, but also there's not all that much so there's like little plots that make up a greater picture which is usually how books go isn't it so there's these little plot lines like this book like them wanting to have this book read uh like the history of the book not actually reading a book it's just we just get tiny pieces of it every now and again and it find it it does go into something explaining books and not spoiling them totally is very hard by the way very hard um but at the same time as Ophelia is going through well from the first arc into the second arc and wherever she ends up along the way she kind of has to disguise herself a lot and like go in through the bottom grapes grape lines uh, she has to like disguise herself a lot and sort of go work in like the bottom dog tier thing and she I mean she gains a lot of information as it were she gets at some point she gets uh, blamed for murder which isn't actually a murder but yeah and she didn't actually do anything there's um so as Ophelia is walking through life as it were um figuring like figuring out why she's being brought to this arc in the first place and other things along the way she gains a lot of I guess perspective she finds friends and enemies along the way um some more than others and she figures out things that doesn't really make sense 
in the greater scheme of things, in this world, that is. We have this mystery, I guess. Um, it's it's a mystery ready to be solved and it's not a hard mystery and you, it doesn't make you think all that much but if you remember all the little plots, the, the tiny plots along the way, um, that's when you go like, aha, okay, this actually makes sense but it's also so much more than actually needed. I want to say I guess it's like a whole book more than actually needed but I did enjoy myself so there's that and now I've finished a series which is awesome awesome anyway um I think this has been mostly waffling about absolutely nothing as per usual but that's me in a nutshell I'm not gonna lie that is me in a nutshell and um I I I'm actually curious to see what will end up being in the video because wow there's so much to edit out I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure anyway thank you so much for watching um until next time take care of a boy <laughs>